Hello, good evening everyone. Welcome to the second meeting of our Common Council in September. Uh, Madam Clerk, please read the adequate notice compliance statement. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by the City Clerk's Office in the preparation of the Council Annual Meeting Notice dated December 15, 2022, which was properly distributed and posted per statutory requirements. Please be advised the fire exits are to my right, your left, and at the back of the room. Okay, thank you. Roll call, please. Ms. Allen? Here. Ms. Fox? Ms. Hamlet? Here. Ms. Levine? Here. Dr. Levine? Here. Mr. Miniger? Here. President Vartan? Present. Thank you. And we will now have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. Madam Clerk, please read the explanatory notes regarding closed session and hearings and comments. A closed session meeting as authorized by state statute was announced and held prior to the start of this meeting and the known items for discussion were listed on the published closed session agenda. Please be advised that council meetings are broadcast live on Comcast channel 36 and Verizon channel 30 and rebroadcast on Thursdays and Saturdays on HTTV on Comcast 36 and Verizon 33. When invited to speak, please come to the lectern, clearly state your name and address, spell your last name, and speak into the podium microphone so that your comments can be un understood by all and properly recorded. Whenever an audience or council member reads from a prepared statement, please give or email a copy to the city clerk's office at cityclerk at cityofsummit.org. To help facilitate an orderly meeting and to permit all to be heard, speakers are asked to limit their comments to approximately three minutes or so in length. Unless you are using an electronic device to follow meeting agenda or need it for emergency contact purposes, please turn it off. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. On to reports, and we'll start with Madam Mayor. Thank you, Council President. Good evening, everyone. I have a few announcements to make. Uh, the City of Summit Shade Tree Advisory Committee and Reeves Reed, Reed Arboretum are announcing the Summit Eco Action TikTok Fest to be held on October, in October 2023. Summit teenagers are invited to submit a short form video between 10 and 60 seconds that highlights what environmental actions they are involved in, such as volunteering at the Summit Free Market, planting trees at the tiny forest, composting food scraps, or how they envision a cleaner, greener world. The deadline to enter by email to trees at cityofsummit.org is Friday, October 6th. Entries will be shown at a viewing party at the Reeves Reed Arboretum on October 19th from 6.30 to 8, and select entries will be posted to the City of Summit YouTube channel. I think it sounds like something fun, teenagers. Um, not so much for me. <laughs> I'm not a very good film person. Um, Summit Police Department is currently hiring school crossing guards for days that school is in session, Monday through Friday, from 7.45 a.m. to 8.30 a.m., and again, from 3 p.m. to 3.45 p.m. Uniforms and training are provided by the Summit Police Department. Crossing guards earn $50 a day and are eligible for an incentive bonus for maintaining perfect attendance during the school year. Applicants must be 18 years of age or older, provide their own transportation to and from their crossing post, and pass a background screening. Applications are available at the police department or on the city website. Please contact the Traffic Bureau at traffic at spdnj.org with any questions. In the coming weeks, we will transition to a new emergency alert system as our provider, SwiftReach, has been acquired by Smart911. We are committed to ensuring a smooth transition and maintaining your safety as a top priority. At the next council meeting, we will have a presentation on the new system and receive more details on how staff is managing the transition. I have been told by our communications office that the city will host a workshop at City Hall on Wednesday, October 11th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. for anyone in the community that needs assistance signing up. SAGE will also host us on Thursday, October 12th from 10 to 11 a.m. where we'll conduct a, another workshop for seniors. Then on 
We will be at the Summit Community Center to help seniors or anyone else that needs help enrolling. If you cannot attend any of those dates, please email pressoffice at cityofsummit.org and someone will get back to you with assistance. And we're probably gonna have something like this as one of these workshops as well at the library, potentially the connection, the why, just to make sure that anyone who needs help signing up digitally can do so. Uh, we wouldn't be doing this, but for the fact that uh, SwiftReach was acquired by some, um, Smart 911. Uh, and lastly, I just wanted to say, I, I have been approached by many members of the community um, who, it, while it has taken a while, have been so pleased with all of the road work that has been done in the city of Summit in the last six months. Um, we're not done, and I don't think you're ever finished with doing road work, but I just wanted to thank uh, Aaron Schrager, Director of Community Services, the Engineering Division, and Michael Caputo, Superintendent of the Department of Public Works, because some of the works, the jobs have been done by Summit staff, and others have, of course, been contracted out to contractors. But the engineering work has been uh, really time consuming, and these guys have done a great job. And we didn't do a lot, of course, during COVID. Um, and a lot of the PSE and G, JCPNL, uh, New Jersey American Water, they, they, they really did a lot of work over the summer and the last six months digging up our roads. So uh, it's been a long process. And I'm, I'm very grateful for all the time and effort that you guys all put into this. So please convey my thanks, and I'm sure that of all the members of council to your staff. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it. Thank here, you. Here, here. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. On to our city administrator for his report. Thank you, Council President. Good evening. Uh, to uh, tie into uh, the mayor's comments about infrastructure, uh, over the next week, PSE and G crews will be replacing mains and services on the following streets in Summit. Uh, Pearl Street between Ridgedale Avenue and Baltus Roll Road, and Morris Avenue between Ashwood Avenue and Shunpike Road. Road closures and detours will be in effect, and Summit Police will be on site to direct traffic. Work will take place Monday through Friday between the hours of 7 a.m. and 5 p.m., weather permitted. The next Summit Free Market event is next week on Friday, September, actually it's this week on Friday, September 22nd, from 12, 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. at the transfer station. Stop by and drop off any unwanted yard sale, quality items, and browse other donated items. It's all free. Residents must have uh, a permit to access the transfer station to attend. Permits can be purchased online through the Parking Services Agency, uh, cityofsummit.org slash parking. Visitors will now be limited to 60 minutes at each Summit Free Market event. For more information on the Summit Free Market, please go to summitfreemarket.org. And then lastly, residents are invited to help the Summit Free, Mar uh, Free Public Library celebrate its 150th milestone uh, anniversary by entering a contest to design a logo. The contest is open to people of all ages. Uh, submissions will be accepted through Wednesday, October 4th, 2023. Uh, Summit Free Public Library staff and trustees will judge the artwork. Please go to summitlibrary.org for contest rules and more information. Thank you, Council President. That's all I have. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. And on to my report. I'll be quick. Uh, many thanks to SDI, uh, the Elks, and all the organizations and volunteers who were involved in making Arts and Cars such a wonderful event again this year. Uh, SDI has also continued Summit Street Sounds into the fall here and continues to make our downtown a wonderful destination. Uh, September is a National Preparedness Month and an opportunity for the city to further raise awareness about the importance of emergency preparedness. Summit's emergency management team is encouraging residents to take steps to protect themselves and their families by planning to reduce the negative impacts of potential disasters. Resources are available at ready.gov and on the City of Summit website at cityofsummit.org. And of course, as Mayor Radis mentioned, please sign up for our emergency alerts from SMART 911. Thank you. That concludes my report. And we're on to a proclamation. Madam Mayor. Thank you. Um, I would like to ask Patricia Black and Linda Seelbach to meet me at the podium.
night. Whereas September 17, 2023, marks the 236th anniversary of the, dra of the drafting of the Constitution of the United States of America by the Constitutional Convention, and whereas it is fitting and proper to accord official recognition to this magnificent document and its memorable anniversary, and to the patriotic celebrations which will commemorate the occasion, and whereas Public Law 915 guarantees the issuing of a proclamation each year by the President of the United States of America designating September 17th to September 23rd as Constitution Week. Now therefore, I, Nora Radist, Mayor of the City of Summit, do hereby proclaim September 17th to September 23, 2023 as Constitution Week and ask our citizens to reaffirm the ideals of the, the framers of the Constitution had in 1787 by vigilantly protecting the freedoms guaranteed to us through this guardian of our liberties, remembering that lost rights may never be regained. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Summit to be affixed this 19th day of September in the year 2023. Would you like to say a few words? No, not really. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank let's you. let's have a picture. Okay. Well, thank you. We are now moving on to a marathon of ordinances for hearing, and we're going to kick it off with our city clerk. Ordinance number 23-3292, an ordinance to amend the code, Appendix A, schedule of fees contained in the revised general ordinances of the city of Summit. Okay. Let's kick it off. Uh, Council member Levine. Thank you, Council President. Ordinance number 23-3292 amends the schedule of fees for various permitting processes. The Department of Com Community Services has completed a comprehensive review of all fees associated with the permitting process and has compared them to neighboring municipalities. Some changes were made as the fee ordinance hadn't been reviewed in many years. Some examples of changes include establishment of a lead paint inspection fee, increase in the cost of a permit fee for installation of a swimming pool, clarification to the zoning permit fee, um, fee for a fence that will increase from $40 to $50, just to give an idea of orders of magnitude. I'm, <coughs> pardon? I move to open the hearing for this ordinance. I will second that and I will go ahead and open the hearing. Let's start with council members first. Nope. Uh, members of the public? No? Okay. I think we're going to go ahead and close that hearing. All right. Thank you very much. On to the second one, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 23-3293, an ordinance granting renewal of municipal consent to Comcast of New Jersey 2 LLC to construct, connect, operate, and maintain a cable vision cable television system in the city of Summit, County of Union, New Jersey. Okay, Council Member Hamlet. Thank you, Council President. This is ID number 23-3293. This is an ordinance granting the renewal of a cable franchise agreement with Comcast for the next 10 years. This has been approved by the Office of Cable TV uh, with, and with the BPU. I would like to make a motion to open the hearing. I will second that and our hearing is open. Council members first. Members of the public. Well, Rosie, would you like to give a quick synopsis of what this is so that you can? Sure. Put, I'm so, not doing a good job explaining it, so you, yeah. in case anybody's <laughs> interested, in case, was, in case anybody's interested, Rosie has done a lot of work on this, so. Okay. It was a good explanation. Well, the, the credit really goes to Ron Cavanaugh, our assistant counsel, 
But um, so every 10 years, we are to uh, review and uh, consider the franchise agreement with Comcast Cable. They're our cable provider. And um, after reviewing um, any possible changes with the agreement, which there are none here, um, it has to be submitted to the Office of Cable Television at the BPU. Uh, they review it, and then they send it back um, approved or not approved. And in, in this case, it was approved. And so um, the only real substantive change in that ordinance <coughs> is that um, because we now have HD equipment in the room, we were hoping that Comcast would consider giving us uh, an HD channel um, so that we would have a better um, quality output uh, of our broadcasts here in, here in the uh, council chamber. Um, that was not to be. However, our assistant council recommended that we incorporate some language in there that would allow us to have the HD channel if Comcast were to um, uh, later on throughout the life of this agreement, um, you know, offer it to us. So that's really the only change that's in there. Um, that's it. Thanks, Rosie. My forehead doesn't need to look any shinier <laughs> on TV, so so that's fine. We'll we'll take HD when it comes. Uh, okay. Uh, any other comments from members of the public on this one? Okay. I think we're going to close that hearing, and moving on to the next one, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number twenty three dash thirty two ninety four, an ordinance amending the code, chapter seven, traffic, section seven dash eight, parking. Subsection 7-8.6, all night parking prohibited, except for certain municipal streets with multiple dwelling units of 10 or more units, and subsection 7-25.4, regulations. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Hamlin. Uh, thank you, Council President. This is ID number 23-3294. The purpose of this ordinance is to allow the residents of Bavoir Avenue Condominium Association on Bavoir Avenue and Bavoir Place to park overnight on the street due to the lack of an off-street driveway for these residences. There is no on-site parking on the premises because the driveways do not exist. Residents will be subject to paying parking fees, which is $100 per quarter. After careful consideration and review by the city solicitor, we are requesting that the residents of strictly Bavoir Avenue Condo Association be able to park on Bavoir Avenue and Bavoir Place overnight from the hours of 3 p.m. until 8 a.m. after prepaying, as I just mentioned, the normal overnight uh, rates for overnight parking. I would like to make a motion to move the hearing. And I second. Okay, the hearing is open. Comments from members of council? Okay. I have a comment. Yeah. Um, I'm excited to vote yes on this ordinance. I think it's such a good idea and there's a, a real hardship here and this is a creative solution. I guess my question is, and, and the reason I had asked if you had convened the um, parking advisory committee, which you did and discussed it, I guess my question is, or it's just something for us to think about, if another resident um, feels that they have a similar hardship, how do, we, how do we weigh a request from someone else who feels they have a similar hardship and, and too also wants to park you know, on the street overnight? How do we consider that and um, do we have a plan in place? Sure, well, uh, thank future? you, Councilwoman Levine. I mean, I think the, the really uh, cool thing about this was the residents literally just came and asked. And then of course we go and we ask our expert uh, parking director because you have so much experience, but I think you know, we'll always take anything under consideration, but Rita, you may opine on that. Through you, Council President, mm -hmm. one of the uh, main reasons why we looked at this is because they do not have a driveway. Mm -hmm. um, I checked with our longstanding zoning officer here in Summit, and they are the only location that does not have a driveway. But um, like Councilman Delia Hamlet said, we will consider any request. We may not be able to um, approve it, but we will take any request from any resident at any time. Thank you. You're welcome. Excellent. Uh, I'm having, having uh, I think, been on the parking committee a few years ago when we started the overnight parking. I'm a big fan of this um, because there are some places where it's just 
very hard. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard to have a car and be able to park it overnight. Um, so I think this is a good thing for us to be able to do. And on this case-by-case -case basis, I think when there's other instances when it comes up, you know, I, we hear a lot about the apartments on uh, Woodland Avenue also. So, you know, if it's, if it's going to be safe and everybody can weigh in on that process, I think we should, you know, can and should move forward with those other requests, you know, one at a time as they come. Yeah. Thank you, Council President. Uh, generally, I would be no for parking on the street um, because of snow and you know weather-related issues. Um, I also think of it as a safety issue because um, you, you know just numerous cars parked on a street generally at night is not something I would um, support. But this is a hardship. Um, you know, we went to see the um, the residents and looking where they have to park at the middle school. That's also a safety issue at night, um, coming home from work late, coming home from school or um, what have you in the middle of the night from the um, middle school really um, prompted me to say that I thought this was a very good idea for them, especially um, separately with the hospital there as well, that you couldn't park in front of your own house um, with the hospital. So those were the two reasons that I really feel like this is um, a good decision. Okay. Other comments? No, yep. Council President, through you. Um, it's important to note that this is also in conjunction with some other ordinances that are coming up. So this works because of the uh, handful of ordinances that are that are passed tonight, hopefully. Okay. Uh, comments from members of the public? Come on. Just a reminder to give us your name and address, please. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Ryan Minkin. I live on 10 Beauvoir Avenue, as well as uh, up with me are other members of the Beauvoir Avenue Corporation who live on uh, different numbers of Beauvoir Avenue as well. Um, so thank you to the council people who have really helped um, push this forward, and Rita, who is also a great um, uh, advisory member on that. Um, so just to discuss this a little bit further, um, this might have been brought up at prior council meetings, but as was discussed, our uh, co-op is actually, some of the houses are 150 years old or older. Um, my house particularly is, um, and I, I believe one other is as well. Others are probably over 100 years old. So obviously this was before cars were very common. Um, and since uh, Beauvoir Avenue has existed for the last 50 to 75 years. Um, there's been a mismatch of different parking solutions for the residents. Um, the current sort of solution that um, has been in place since I moved in was to park at the Sampson lot, which is at the middle school, which is about a block away. Um, to get to the Sampson lot, you have to cross Morris Avenue as well as Summit Avenue which there has been pedestrian accidents, there has been cars jumping the curbs, and has been a traditionally very difficult place to cross the street. Um, as we have members of our co-op who are um, a little bit older, as well as young children, um, it's been a very dangerous proposition to park our car um, a block away and walk across those two streets to get to our house. Um, so I believe that this will be a safe a solution to those issues as well as which was brought up already we are uh, a block away from um, the Overlook Medical Center um, as well as about two blocks away from the train station so there's often um, people who are staying overnight at the hospital as well as visitors um, who might be traveling into New York City or other places um, who might be parking on the street as well so this will give us um, sort of uh, the privilege for residents of the street to park um, on their respective street and not have to cross those busy streets to get to our house. Um, those were about all my comments that I had. Thank you. Okay. Other comments from members of the public? I think we'll close the hearing on that one. Very good. On to the next one, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 23-3295, an ordinance amending the code, chapter seven, traffic, section seven-eight, parking, 
subsection 7-8.5, parking time limited on certain streets. Okay, Council Member Hamlet. Uh, thank you, Council President. This is ID number 23-3295. Uh, the purpose of this ordinance is to remove the meters on Bavora Avenue and limit the parking to five hours from Morris Avenue to Walnut. The meters on Bavora Avenue and Bavora Place have been 12 hours for 12 hour meters for a very long time. To deter uh, non-resident commuters or hospital employees from parking on Bavora Avenue and Bavora Place, we're recommending the removal of meters and making a five hour time limit on, that, on those streets. Uh, many times, as we just mentioned, men, had mentioned, these are taken up by hospital employees uh, or non-resident commuters. Um, sorry, that's it. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to open the hearing. And I second. Okay, the hearing is open. Uh, comments from members of council? Comments from members of the public? Sure. Hi everyone, uh, Ryan Minkin, 10 Beauvoir Avenue. Um, just to discuss this a little bit further, as previously mentioned, um, there's often um, hospital visitors, <laughs> hospital employees, as well as commuters parking on Beauvoir Avenue. Um, this makes it difficult for um, uh, contractors, visitors to our homes, as well as the residents to park on our own street um, for the time being. And essentially this will um, give the privilege to the residents as it is a residential street um, for um, us to park on the street. Okay, that's okay. thank you. I just have one question. Sure. After the, when, when the yeah. public is done. Other uh, comments from members of the public? Thank Question? You. Uh, through you, Council President. Oh. Um, if a parking attendant, Rita, director, um, uh, drives by and the residents are parked on the street, um, they have a permit to park there. So they won't get ticketed? No. No? No. Through you, Council President. Now, this is just giving them five hours of parking. If they're parking overnight on the street, um, normally the ordinance is till 8 a.m., so they'll have five hours from 8 a.m. Then they can repark, so to speak, at 3 p.m. So that takes up all the time, so that basically they will not be ticketed for any type of violation of this ordinance. Yeah. We are not getting into a residential day parking permit by street. This is not what this is. They have the ability to park on the street okay. for five hours. Okay, mm -hmm. and then they pay that for that five hours. They pay the for the five it? hour. Now, on this this particular ordinance during the day, the meters are being removed, so yeah. they'll have okay. free five hour parking. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Other comments? Uh, let's close the hearing on this one also. And the next one, Madam Clerk. Uh, ordinance number 23-3296, an ordinance amending the code, chapter seven, traffic, section 7-8 parking, subsection 7-8.5, parking time limited on certain streets. Okay, thank you. Council Member Hamlin. Thank you, Council President. This is ID number 23-3296. The purpose of this ordinance is to amend, to change the parking time on the north side, Walnut Street between Bavoir Place and Broad Street from 12 hours to three hours. And uh, the meters on Bavoir and Bavoir Place have been 12 hours for a very long time. And um, based on the same discussions that we just had, I'd like to make a motion to open the hearing. Can I second? Okay, uh, the hearing is open. Comments from members of council, yes. Through you, council president, I'm just curious how come you, how you chose the five hours and the three hours um, and which street got which and the reason? Yep. Through you, council yep. president. Um, Bavora Avenue, we're again trying to accommodate these residents and other residents on the street. Um, with uh, Walnut Street, there are a lot of industrial companies in the area, um, and a lot of their employees, because it's just convenient, park there. So that's why we didn't leave it at five hours, because part-time employees could take up those spots. Hospital employees or even hospital visitors can take up those spots. So we brought it down to three hours. And also, Walnut Street has many multi-dwelling units. Um, so in fairness, we kept it at three hours so that there could be more turnover for all the residents on that street as well. Thank you. You're welcome. 
and not to give the impression we're anti people visiting the hospital, right? <laughs> they have a new, uh, they, they have a new, yeah. they have a brand new parking garage, uh, and there's a lot more space there. So the hope would be employees and visitors are parking on the hospital property uh, rather than on the street. Correct. Yes, very good. Um, other comments, members of council? Comments from members of the public? Okay, let's close that one. <clears throat> Last ordinance for hearing, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 23-3297, an ordinance amending the code, chapter seven, traffic, section 7-8, parking, subsection 7-8.5, parking time limited on certain streets. Okay, thank you, Councilmember Hamlet. Uh, thank you, Council President. This is ID number 23-3297. Uh, the purpose of this ordinance is to establish three-hour parking time limit on the north side of Euclid Avenue between Beechwood Road and Maple Street. Can we pull a visual up with this, or did we, is it? I, I guess we don't have to. Um, for, for, all, for those of you who don't know, right outside of Lincoln Hubbard, on the other side of the apartments, um, we are establishing this area um, typically there are four cars at, that can park at, at this area, so we're limiting that to two spaces. Um, I think that this is really gonna help uh, with traffic around that Lincoln Hubbard area. And uh, there is also, sorry, uh, many parents park illegally right before the curb, so we're actually gonna add curb markings as well. And I think this will really help with that um, part of the problem of extreme and excessive parking around 3 p.m. Um, with that being said, I'd like to, uh, I would like to make a motion to open the hearing. And I second. Okay, the hearing is open. And for those following along at home, uh, this would be on page 52 of the packet, um, which is the visual. Um, okay, hearing's open. Comments from members of council? I just have a question that I didn't ask Rita yet. Sorry, Rita. Uh, Rita, when will this be, once this is passed, when will, I know I call you every day because there's four cars lined up on that corner every day. When can we get Chief Zagorski to enforce this if, if it's passed? Through you, Council President, the first process is, is we need to have Public Works stripe and sign the area. Um, as soon as that is done, um, then um, it will be enforced by parking services on a daily basis. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Council, yes? I just have a comment through you, Council President. Um, I'm glad that we're doing something to improve the parking and accessibility situation at one of the uh, public schools in town. I know that that's some of the most stressful time of the day is pickup because the way our schools are designed in residential neighborhoods without dedicated lots. Um, we know what that looks like and also we, as far as outreach that we get um, as council people, uh, we hear quite a bit from uh, neighbors and residents about, uh, about what they perceive as, as um, safety concerns around pickup time. So I'm glad this is being addressed. Um, it feels like we're moving it from four, four spots that are not, not legal, is that right? Like it, four non-spots down to two legal spots, is that what this is doing? That's correct. Great, so that's good. Um, I'm just hopeful that, um, you know, having had children go through Lincoln Hubbard, that there are more also other creative ways we can keep working on to help, um, help make the parking situation there feel a little easier at times. But this is a good step. Thank you. If I can just add, yep. it's a very dangerous curve currently yeah. with the four vehicles there, and that, that's the main focus, yeah. is if we remove two of the vehicles, um, it'll help and prevent a head-on collision. That sounds like a good plan. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and also the sight lines are, are massively yeah. obstructed from this four car. I, I see it every day and it's, it's an accident waiting to happen. But, um, so it, it'll definitely improve, improve that visibility around that, that curve, so. Okay. Uh, comments from members of the public? All right. Let's close that hearing. All right, we're on to ordinances for final consideration. These are gonna sound familiar. Uh, let's start with the first one, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 23-3292, an ordinance to amend the code, Appendix A, Schedule of Fees, 
contained in the revised general ordinances of the City of Summit. All right, Council Member Levine. Thank you, Council President. Ordinance number 23-3292 amends the schedule of fees for various permitting processes. Um, as we just had our hearing for this ordinance, I'd like to move to enact this ordinance. Okay, and I will second that. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Allen. Aye. Ms. Hamlet. Aye. Dr. Levine. Aye. Mr. Miniger. Aye. President Fortin. Aye. And the motion carries. Thank you. On to the next one. Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 23-3293, an ordinance granting renewal of the municipal consent to Comcast of New Jersey, Roman numeral 2, LLC, to construct, connect, operate, and maintain a cable television system in the city of Summit, County of Union, New Jersey. Okay, Council Member Hamlet. Uh, thank you, Council President. Uh, this is ID 2332-93, an ordinance granting the renewal of cable franchise agreement with Comcast for the next 10 years that has been approved by the Office of Cable and also uh, the BPU. Uh, having just closed this hearing a moment ago, I would like to move this ordinance for final adoption. Okay, I will second that. And let's have a roll call vote, please. Ms. Allen? Aye. Ms. Hamlet? Aye. Dr. Levine? Aye. Mr. Miniger? Aye. President Vartan? Aye. And the motion carries. Thank you. On to the next one, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 23-3294, an ordinance amending the code, Chapter 7, Traffic, Section 7-8, Parking, Subsection 7-8.6, All Night Parking Prohibited, except for certain municipal streets with multiple dwelling units of 10 or more units, and Subsection 7-25.4, Regulations. Okay, Council Member Hamlet. Uh, thank you, Council President. Um, if I may ask, uh, Rosemary, do I need? Do you want me to repeat everything? No. I can just no. say. Just say you just had the hearing on. So I can skip all those number. words. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> thank you. Let's just so we can let everybody go home early. Okay, <laughs> when you're learning, you can just ask dumb questions, right? Uh, thank you, Council President. This is ID number twenty-three dash thirty-two ninety-four. Having just closed this hearing a few moments ago, I move this ordinance for final adoption. And I second. Okay, let's get a roll call vote on that, please. Ms. Allen? Aye. Ms. Hamlet? Aye. Dr. Levine? Aye. Mr. Miniger? Aye. President Vartan? Aye. The motion carries. And on to the next one, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 23-3295, an ordinance amending the code, Chapter 7, Traffic, Section 7-8, uh, Parking, Subsection 7-8.5, Parking Time Limited on Certain Streets. Councilmember Hamlet. Uh, thank you, Council President. This is ID 233295. Having just had the hearing a few moments ago, I would like to uh, move this ordinance for final adoption. And I second. Okay, roll call vote, please. Ms. Allen? Aye. Ms. Hamlet? Aye. Dr. Levine? Aye. Mr. Miniger? Aye. President Vartan? Aye. And the motion carries. Thank you. On to the next one, Madam Clerk. Just flip this page here. Ordinance number 23-3296, an ordinance amending the code, Chapter 7, Traffic, Section 7-8, Parking, Subsection 7-8.5, Parking Time Limited on Certain Streets. Okay, Council Member Hamlet. Thank you, Council President. This is ID 23-3296. Having just had this hearing a few moments ago, I'd like to move this ordinance for final adoption. And I second. Okay, roll call vote, please. Ms. Allen? Aye. Ms. Hamlet? Aye. Dr. Levine? Aye. Mr. Miniger? Aye. President Vartan? Aye. The motion carries. Last one, Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 23-3297, an ordinance amending the code, Chapter 7, Traffic, Section 7-8, Parking, Subsection 7-8.5, Parking Time Limited, on certain streets. Council Member Hamlet. Uh, thank you, Council President. This is ID number 23-3297, and having just had this hearing a few moments ago, I'd like to move this for final adoption. And I second. All righty. Roll call vote, please. Ms. Allen? Aye. Ms. Hamlet? Aye. Dr. Levine? Aye. Mr. Miniger? Aye. President Vartan? Aye. And the motion carries. Excellent. Thank you very much, everybody. All right. We now have one ordinance for introduction. And Councilmember Fox is chair of the Safety and Health Committee, but is not present this evening. I will introduce this one uh, and the resolutions from the Safety Committee later. So. Uh, the purpose of this, uh, oh, I'm sorry, you have to read it first. You hurt my feelings. I know, I <laughs> okay. and I made a note here, too, that says Rosie. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, ordinance ID number 10649, an ordinance amending the code, Chapter 7, Traffic, Section 7-8, Parking, Subsection 7-8.7, 7 
parking prohibited at all times on certain streets. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. So now, the purpose of this ordinance uh, is to prohibit parking on Morris Avenue between Bedford Road and 175 feet south toward Norwood Avenue. After an engineering and safety investigation, it was determined that this would enhance safety by improving the line of sight. I move this ordinance for introduction, and the hearing for this ordinance will be held at our next meeting on the 3rd of October. And I'm looking for a second from this direction. And I second. Excellent. Thank you very much. And roll call vote on that, Thank you. please. Ms. Allen? Aye. Ms. Hamlet? Aye. Dr. Levine? Aye. Mr. Miniger? Aye. President Vartan? Aye. Excellent. All right. On to resolutions. Um, we have, where are we here? Resolutions. Okay, so the first one under law and labor, the new council member for Ward 1. So per our discussion in closed session, uh, we're going to bump this resolution to the next council meeting also, which will happen on the 3rd of October. Um, so we're going to skip that one for now. And we're going to move on to the second one, uh, Council Member Hamlet. Uh, thank you, Council President. This is ID number 10643. Uh, as, disco as discussed in closed session this evening, this is to authorize the use of sick leave with pay within the uh, Department of Community Services Division of Public Works Roads, Roads Unit. I would like to make a motion to move this resolution. Okay, I will second that. And we'll open it up to conversation for members of Council. Comments from members of the public? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Excellent. On to finance. Council Member Miniger. Thank you, Council President. This is number 10639, and this resolution certifies the 2022 audit review. Uh, this resolution is an annual occurrence as required by the state of New Jersey that we certify the local finance to the local finance board that members of this governing body have reviewed that audit for 2022. For the third year in a row, our city's professional staff under CFO Tammy Baldwin has achieved a comment-free, recommendation-free audit, which is a very good thing. Uh, congratulations to CFO Baldwin and to the city staff who worked on this uh, for achieving this uh, for the third year running. I move to adopt this resolution. I second. Uh, I'll add my comments. I'll, I'll add my congratulations. Um, comments from members of council. Yeah. I'd just like to say congratulations as well. Uh, true professional, Tammy. Congratulations. Yeah. Comments? Yeah. I, I just want to say thank you, Tammy. Oh, sure. You're amazing. <laughs> comments from members of the public? Yes. Good evening. Claire Toth, 11 Sunset Drive. Through you, Council President, this is going to sound repetitious. Um, but. I want to put some, this in, in a bit of context because I've done similar work with CFO Baldwin. Um, when city is audited, it's not just the generally accepted um, accounting procedures known as GAAP. It's also a GAO audit um, called the Yellow Book Audit, which has additional fairly stringent overviews. And specifically, they're looking for information about internal control findings and noncompliance with laws and regulations had conversations with other accountants, and at least 50 to 60% of these yellow book audits find deficiencies. So I think it's really a tribute to CFO Baldwin and her staff that as you say, three years running, some it has been comment free. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Okay. I think we're ready to vote on this one. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Excellent. On to the next one, Council Member Miniger. Thank you, Council President. This is number 10666, and this resolution authorizes the issuance of bond anticipation notes in an amount not to exceed 5,131,000. This year's capital budget funds were appropriated by a unanimous vote at our June 20th Council meeting. And these notes are to temporarily finance the many improvements across the city that came from that capital budget. As a reminder, among those capital projects approved were 100% of the requests from police and fire departments, including the ALPR system for use by our police to help prevent car thefts. The projects also include Maybe Playground, improvements to the stormwater drainage system, 
road repairs and resurfacing projects and crosswalk and pedestrian safety improvements. I move to adopt this resolution. I second. Okay. Comments from members of council? Okay. Uh, comments from members of the public? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. On to the next one, Council Member Minniger. Thank you, Council President. This is number 10662, and this resolution authorizes the issuance, sale, and award of the notes associated with the summits portion of phases five and six of the Joint Meetings Facilities Flood Mitigation Project. These notes will represent $1,700,000 uh, and $665,000, $665, respectively, 90% of which FEMA will reimburse us for. This project ensures that this critical component of our infrastructure is ready for major storm systems of the future. I move to adopt this resolution. I second. Okay. Comments from members of council? Comments from members of the public? Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next one, Council Member Minniger. Thank you, Council President. This is number 10647, and this resolution authorizes the cancellation of improvement authorization funds, or small portions of appropriated funds that were not used. These funds will be put back into the capital improvement fund, the capital surplus, or bonds and notes authorized but not issued as appropriate. This is a good accounting practice, and I move to adopt this resolution. I second. Okay, comments from members of council? Comments from members of the public? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Last one, Council Member Miniger. Thank you, Council President. This is number 10670, and this resolution authorizes the accrued time payout for retiring Fire Department Lieutenant Joseph Moschello, effective November 1st, 2023. I want to congratulate Lieutenant Moschello on his upcoming retirement and thank him for his years of service to the city. I move to adopt this resolution. I second. Okay, thank you. Uh, comments from members of council? Comments from members of the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. On to capital projects and community services. Council Member Levine. Thank you, Council President. Resolution number 10650 authorizes an emergency contract to make structural repairs to the Division of Public Works Parks Building. The contract amount is now to exceed $76,000. The building has been deteriorating and the main, the main load-bearing walls are no longer considered structurally sound. This creates a hazard and creates some unsafe conditions. I move to adopt this resolution. Okay, I will second that. And do we have comments from members of council? Council President? Yeah. What is currently being done because of the unsafe uh, status that has been? Well, I think I'll speak and then I can let Aaron, but I know um, some sort of status of, of emergency was declared in July that allowed you to begin the work. Right, Aaron? So, so this has been going on. Correct, through you, Council President. Mm -hmm. uh, when the incident happened, the, the wall became compromised, but uh, the construction official, myself, went out and, and directed Public Works how to shore up what was remaining there um, while they proceeded to um, find repairs in a contractor. Uh, but we've been doing routine inspections and we noticed um, this summer that, that it is starting to shift and that's why the emergency was declared that we have to accelerate the work being done. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Other comments? Comments from members of the public? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. On to the next one, Council Member Levine. Thank you, Council President. Resolution number 10461 awards a bid to a company called Four Cleanup Inc. to complete the Division Avenue improvement project. The scope of work includes the replacement of curbing and sidewalk, cleaning and inspection of all sewers, sewer repairs and upgrades, installation of a flashing beacon at Meadowbrook Court and Valley View Avenue, yay, sign replacement, striping, and full milling and paving of the entire length of Division Avenue. There's also an alternative Oh, alternate bid that you'll see that includes milling and paving of Stony Hill Court, which we will also proceed with. 
The work on Division Avenue is to be funded by the city and will be offset by a local aid grant from NJDOT. As a reminder, on June 7th of 2023, we adopted Resolution 40750, which authorized us to make an agreement with the Borough of New Providence to solicit bids for this improvement project. As I stated then, this project is being done in cooperation with the Borough of New Providence since the road serves as the boundary between our two municipalities. We'd now like to authorize our engineer to accept the lowest responsible bid for this project, which is by Four Cleanup Inc. in the amount of $627,000 um, and $112.95. I move to adopt this resolution. I will second that and we'll open up to comments from members of council. Yep. Uh, are there, where can we find the specifics of when the work will start? Aaron. Aaron, I'll let you answer that. Yes, through you, Council President. Uh, I have spoken to the contractor who indicated he should be able to uh, begin work uh, pretty quickly. Um, that said, it'll take about two weeks for contracts to go back and forth between uh, the city and the contractor. Once they return, we can schedule a, a pre-construction meeting. Uh, then, unfortunately, we will be at the mercy of Mother Nature and the weather, but he believes he could at least get a, a bulk of the you know, concrete work done, and then we'll, we'll see what the weather does. So last year, we did have early you know, freezing temperatures, though it wasn't a harsh winter, so hopefully we can stay in the 50s and, and try to get it paved this year. I just have okay. a, fo yeah. a follow-up question um, through you, Council President. Director Schrager, mm -hmm. I feel like, is it possible when it gets closer to the September, October, November months that within that bid we can actually put, because what if they couldn't start until we were hoping that they can start, but I know this is one road that we, I think is a necessity to get done. Is there, is there anything, and I don't know if that's a, a legal question, but that we can put in the contract that says, you, you're obviously gonna be the low bid, but if you can't start till January, you're out. There, there is um, timing restrictions in the bid. So with this one, they, they don't have a, a start date, they have a completion date. Okay. Uh, and with the timing, we kind of accept that, that you know, May would be more appropriate for them to finish by. Um, so, we, and we know if we put it has to be done by December that likely we'd get no bidders because they would okay. it's too risky with the weather so it, it, it is up to to mother nature and, and the weather but it won't be um, like they will not do work such as what happened on Summit Avenue and Morris Avenue so if they do a little bit of their work it will not make the road worse than it is I mean there'll be a few spots that there might be patches but it's not like we'll let the mill and then not pave this year like we, we would hold milling and paving to do it once so Thank you. When yeah. we spoke about it in committee, the intent is to pave this year. Yeah. And let's hope that Mother Nature cooperates. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say I'm excited that this is on our agenda tonight because, um, and I want to give you and Tammy credit um, because two towns and a grant has gone to paying for this road. So I think that that is an amazing feat. Um, so thank you for what you've done. Um, well, I'm hoping that it gets paved before December. Uh, what I heard you say, Aaron, is if it doesn't get paved, you would um, do patchwork where it's needed in the meantime? Yeah, so if the contractor starts, anything they do will be patched to be safe and, and can accommodate for the winter. If we see that the contractor won't get done, we will have public works go out and make necessary repairs to keep it as smooth as possible for the winter. But our public works would just do our side of the road, obviously, which is the northbound lane. So. Um, and we would advise New Providence to, to take care of theirs, but that's kind of their issue, so. All right, and yeah. we'll just communicate with them if Absolutely. that happens, yes. obviously. Okay, yeah. thank you. But, but to be clear, we can communicate with them, but we can't control what they do. That is correct, yes. Okay. Uh, okay, any other comments, uh, members of the public? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Excellent. On to the next one. Councilmember Levine. Thank you, Council President. Resolution number 10631 authorizes execution of a memor memorandum of understanding between the City of Summit and the State of New Jersey and FEMA to allow our participation in grants. In order to apply, process, or receive any grants or funding on the, under the Federal Emergency Management Agency Public Assistance and or Hazard Mitigation Programs, for presidentially declared major disasters. A memorandum of understanding must be made and entered into between the New Jersey Office of Emergency Management and the City of Summit. The last MOU was signed in 2013. An updated MOU needs to be signed to update the staff members who are listed. I move to adopt this resolution. 
I will second that, and we'll open up to comments from members of council. Comments from members of the public. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. On to the next one, Council Member Lupe. Thank you, Council President. As discussed in closed session, resolution number 10651 appoint, um, appoints John Redstone to be our new sire, fi, excuse me, fire subcode official to replace Joe Michello in his retirement. I move to adopt this resolution. Okay, I'll second that and open up to members, uh, comments from members of council. Comments from members of the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And last one, Council Member Levine. Thank you, Council President. As discussed in closed session, Resolution 10638 declares a vacancy in the Department of Community Services Division of Public Works. I move to adopt this resolution. I second that, and we'll open it up to comments from members of council. Comments from members of the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. All right, on to safety and health. Uh, the first one here is 10664. Uh, this resolution authorizes the purchase of fixed automated license plate recognition system for $195,081.51. This is through a New Jersey state contract and will be purchased through Gold Type Business Machines, Inc. As discussed during the capital budget process, this expands the technology already being used by the police department to create a geofence at various points along the border of the city. The system allows the police department to be flagged when a vehicle comes into or out of town that is stolen is involved in an amber alert or a silver alert. I'm glad we're moving ahead with this, and I moved to adopt this resolution. And I second. Okay, comments from members of council. Yep. I'm just glad we're voting on this tonight. It's a great, Absolutely. <laughs> it's a great project. So. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yep, I agree as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, very oh, excited. Yeah. We don't have to vote now, right? Yep. <laughs> comments from members of the public. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Excellent. On to the next one. <clears throat> this is 10648. This resolution authorizes the submission of the Leary Firefighters Foundation Jeremiah Lucy Grant Program in the amount of $25,000 to be used for the purchase of new turnout gear. I move to adopt this resolution. And I second. Okay, comments from members of council. I have a comment. Yes. Through you, Council President. Anything we can do to help our first responders continue to do their job at the highest level possible, um, I, I'm so glad to support. And I love how this is, involves the creative use of grant money as well. Excellent. Thank you. Comments from members of the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. The next one here is number 10665. This resolution authorizes the execution of a memorandum of understanding between the City of Summit Police Department, Springfield Police, Kenilworth Police, Union Police, Hillside Police, and Trinitas Medical Center for participation in the Alternative Responses to Reduce Instances of Violence and Escalation Together program, which the acronym is ARRIVE TOGETHER. Uh, this is a partnership between Union County Municipal Law Enforcement Agencies and Trinitas Medical Center's Behavioral Health Division. It pairs a crisis intervention team officer and a certified mental health screener. This MOU formalizes the roles and responsibilities of all the parties involved in this cooperative joint effort. I move to adopt this resolution and I would ask uh, Chief Zagorski to give a little more background if you would like. Uh, and a second. Excellent. Good evening. Um, you guys are flying tonight, so I don't want to take up too much more of your time. <laughs> but I do want to talk about, uh, for a few minutes, this very, uh, very important uh, program. Thank you. Uh, Council President, I'm pleased to announce that the Summit Police Department has made the decision to participate in the Arrive Together program. Uh, 
Arrive Together is a highly regarded program aimed at providing a compassionate response during 911 emergency calls involving a mental health crisis. The focus of the Arrive Together program is to provide individuals in crisis with whatever uh, help they need as quickly and effectively as possible by teaming up a police officer specifically trained in crisis intervention with a civilian certified mental health screener in order to respond to 911 emergency calls relating to mental health crisis. The officer and the crisis worker literally arrive together. Both are in plain clothes and arrive at the call in an unmarked police car a vehicle. During the encounter, the mental health screener takes the lead. This focused approach both supports the individual facing a mental health crisis and protects the responding officers. The intention is to get the person uh, in crisis the proper help they need as quickly as possible while, while also preventing escalation and facilita facilitating any necessary de-escalation. Um, this program is critically um, important. Nationally, um, half the incidents of use of force by police um, they are, uh, that is um, done at um, calls involving mental illness. This um, particular program is designed to limit, uh, uh, limit those occurrences of uh, use of force. Another very important component of this program is that when not responding to calls for uh, service, the Arrive Together team will perform follow-up work and proactively visit individuals in the community who would benefit from such an outreach program. The Arrive Together program was initially launched by the New Jersey State Police in December of 2021 in Cumberland County. Shortly thereafter, the Union County Prosecutor's Office initiated an Arrive Together pilot program using a small number of police agencies in Union County with the, with, with the long-term goal of eventually implementing the program countywide. This evening, I'm pleased to announce that before the end of this year, every law enforcement agency in Union County will be participating in this very important program. I could just have a couple uh, minutes just to give you the, um, the logistics of the program, how, it, how it's going to uh, roll out. As, as I indicated before, each police department would de designate an officer to the team to, to, to team up with a mental health uh, service provider screener uh, from Trinitas uh, Medical Center. The, de the, the officer that, that's designated, officer, what officers that are designated for this assignment um, must receive specialized crisis intervention team uh, training. Uh, the crisis intervention uh, team training is a uh, extensive 40-hour uh, um, training component. Um, going back a few years, maybe five years ago, um, when Union County uh, introduced the uh, CIT, the crisis inter intervention team training, uh, they mandated that 30% of um, each uh, police department in Union County's um, uniform uh, patrol uh, division um, up to they wanted 30% of those officers to be tra uh, trained in this uh, crisis intervention training. Uh, tonight, I'm proud uh, to stand here and to report that the Summit Police Department took that training to a, a, a different level. As of this date, 70% uh, of our Uniform Patrol Division is trained in this, um, this uh, specialized training. So back, back to the, uh, the Arrive Together program, the logistics. Um, presently, the, uh, the program the operation hour of the program is set from uh, Monday through Friday from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, these time frames were picked for this program because um, studies show that um, a, a majority of the mental health uh, incidents um, involving the police um, happening during, uh, during this time frame. I was actually curious. Um, I ran our uh, numbers here in Summit. Um, typically, the uh, Summit Police Department responds to anywhere between 75 and 100 of these calls a year. Um, over a three-year period, um, I looked into this and did a time analysis, and um, a little more than 55% of our calls happen in this time frame that they pick, so they know what they're doing. <laughs> um, under the direction of the Union County Prosecutor's Office, all Union County agencies will be, will be participating. The county will subdivide um, uh, the, the county into three sections. Uh, first, um, will be arrived Team West, second uh, section will be arrived Team East, and the third section will be arrived Team North. Each team will consist of a specific number of police departments tasked with providing cross-jurisdictional, uh, uh, cross-jurisdiction response of the Arrive Together initiative within their respect respective team members' jurisdiction. The Summit Police Department, as the Council President indicated, um, that we're gonna be part of the North uh, 
arrive team. And that's going to consist of Union Police Department, Springfield Police Department, Kenilworth Police Department, Hillside Police Department, McCain University Police Department. Each team coordinates a monthly coverage schedule which consists of staffing and scheduling needs of the participating agencies. For instance, smaller municipalities rotate coverage for their assigned day of the week so those municipalities can fully participate in the ARRIVE uh, program without staffing uh, needs over, overburdening the agencies. So basically what they're, they're saying is that um, uh, when we do this schedule, uh, the, the, the amount of time that um, each um, jurisdiction um, takes over as the primary uh, 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 responding unit it will be t depend on the side of each agency and, the, and, and their call volume. The Summer Police Department has agreed to provide coverage for two to four days per month. Now, how, you know, just to be clear how this works is, say, for example, um, in, in uh, the month where the Summer Police Department, um, we're going to be doing two to, two to four days when it's our specific day that um, the uh, ARRIVE team will consist of a Summit police officer and the uh, mental health professional, and they'll be um, based here in Summit, patrolling here in Summit. When they're not responding to calls, they'll be following up um, with um, any, any previous calls involving mental health uh, crisis that they had responded to. But they will also be responding uh, on, the, on this coverage day to those uh, jurisdictions that I mentioned that are in, in the uh, northern team. Um, like I, as indicated, we'll be doing this two to four times a month. This won't be a burden on us because uh, we'll be doing um, five days a week, 20 days uh, a month. So out of, the, um, out of the month, we're doing four days. So the other, um, the other uh, what did I say? 16 days, thank you. <laughs> the other 16 days um, will be benefiting um, from the other jurisdictions providing this service. So for example, on the other 16 days when we're not providing the service, we get a mental health, uh, mental health crisis call here in Summit. Our initial uh, responding units will go to the call. Once they determine what it is, they will call out for the, um, the on-call um, jurisdiction, that we, and they'll respond, to our, um, uh, they'll respond to our call. It shouldn't take you know, um, more than 20 minutes uh, to, to, to have that officer arrive. And that's um, you know, considerably less time than it does when we call out a, screen, a non-call screener. Mm -hmm. And also, too, um, those other 16 days, when we call the screener to come to, to, to Summit, it frees up our officer that would, nor you know, multiple officers that would normally be um, required to, uh, you know, invest a lot of time on that very important call. Now, those other 16 days, um, the, the, the team will arrive, and once they stabilize, um, our officers can clear. <clears throat> Is there any questions? Excellent. Well, thank you, Chief. This program sounds like it'll be tremendously helpful. Uh, and thank you for your diligent work on it and your comprehensive description of it this evening. Any other comments from council? Yes. I just wanted to clarify, thank you for that. I, I, mean, I think this is a fantastic program, it sounds like. So um, my first question is, so the, the worker, the behavioral um, worker is not a police officer. No, it's um, from, from Trinitas Medical Center. Okay, and we will have that person two to four times a month no, we will have access to that person um, Monday through Friday uh, from 12, 12 to 8. eight. Um, we're, that person will be in our town patrolling um, two to four times a month with a Summit police officer. In, in the car? In the car. Okay. But the, the other 16 days when they're not here in Summit, when we do get a call that we need them, we call them and they respond from the jurisdiction that they're patrolling in. So they're available to us um, uh, you know, Monday through Friday at 12 to 8 p.m. Okay, and so say they're in Kenilworth, right. and there's a call, and you, you call that individual, they'll drive to Summit? Yes. On that call, okay. Yes. And is there some kind of protocol around arriving at the same time as a police officer? I, at the yeah, timing, yeah. No, I'm just a whole, curious about the timing. There's a whole um, SOP um, that um, each participating uh, law enforcement agency um, uh, has to uh, uh, produce, and uh, that covers um, you know, the safety issues involved. Um, the, uh, the civilian um, uh, me um, mental health um, person won't be uh, allowed to go in until we stabilize the scene. Okay, and I assume they have new, several people at Trinitas versus just one person. Is it someone that's rotating with everybody? Like, do they have rotational? I don't know, um, you know how they're gonna um, schedule that. 
but there are, there's there's a pool of them. But for the most part, okay. you're going to be working with um, you know a, a pool of the same uh, individuals. So they're going to become familiar, you know, with, with, with the cases that because um, you know, quite fre frequently we um, have to deal with the same people over and over again. So. Um, these mental health um, professionals and also the officers from other towns will learn um, when we go to other towns, you know, we'll become familiar with their, the people that they deal with and vice versa. And do they have to go on the call with the CIT trained officers or does that, um, so if you have a mental health, I'm assuming a call comes in, mm -hmm. you guys decide that it's a mental health issue on that call, right? right? You do a screening of some sort. When the call comes in, um, we will respond as normal with our um, uniform patrol. Once we stabilize the scene and determine it's a, me a mental health crisis that would require um, the expertise of the, um, the arrive team, the arrive team will be called. Okay. Okay. I think this is great. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Yep. Uh, just a couple quick comments, Chief. Um, I, I don't know if you mentioned, I was looking at the pilot data from the initial, I think there was 350 cases. So um, if anybody wants to look at the pilot data from that, it's actually pretty impressive when you look at the um, drastically reducing the use of force in, in having uh, these folks out. The one thing I would want to mention is, um, if we haven't done it yet, I would just recommend that we coordinate with Bridges because I think it's going to be really important that they are uh, included in this conversation as well. It just as mental health, obviously. I just think that might be an important. Um, I know we're going out for a lot of mental health calls for, for uh, our unhoused individuals as well, so maybe that would help be helpful. Also, too, when, um, when the uh, re response to the ARRIVE team uh, uh, arrives to a specific call, we use the same um, reporting module that we use for use of force uh, uh, benchmark analytics. Each call, they're going to um, enter specific data for the call, so that data could be um, it could be uh, tracked and it could be, you know, you coordinate with other mental health experts as well. That's great. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Through you, Council President. Um, I always knew there was a heavy clinical burden on what you do in law enforcement, but to hear you quantify it, it's actually quite stunning. And I, um, I think this is a wonderful program. I'm glad to have learned about it and excited to see um, how it can improve uh, outcomes here. In this, popu in, the, in this population, so. I mean, some of the police department has always been, I, I think, you know, uh, ahead of the curve in, in responding to mental health uh, t crisis yeah. type calls with our training. Um, this is only gonna make, our, uh, make us better. And, yeah. Uh, so. Agreed, thank you, Chief. And also, uh, Council President, if I can, um, with the memorandum of understanding, I had um, indicated that um, there's the one section where there's three options, A, B, and C. Yep. What should be checked off is program option A, specifically co-responder program, law enforcement officer, and uh, the mental health uh, specialist respond together to emergency service calls and or follow-up visits that relate to behavioral health crisis. If we could um, add that in there. Excellent. Okay. Uh, you're, uh, Just requires a check or an X mark. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, comments from members of the public. Jamel Boyer, 204 Morris Avenue. Um, council President, Mayor, Council Persons. Uh, I think this is an excellent program. I uh, just have a couple of questions. So there are three options. And does the mayor get to look at those options? Did you have a, a chance to? No, I'm not an expert in police um, activity, but I'm, I'm, the, the decision is up to the police chief, not okay. me. Okay, got you. Um, and my other question is, and I think uh, the chief answered it. So for situations where the, the person that's having issues is a threat to him or herself and someone else, the police will act accordingly to um, minimize the threat first, right? Of course. Is that, okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Members of the public. Okay, I think we're ready to vote. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. And one more from safety and health. This one is 10668. This resolution authorizes the promotion 
of Firefighter Matthew Lemons to the rank of Lieutenant. I enthusiastically move to adopt this resolution. And I second. Okay, comments from members of council? Comments from members of the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Congratulations, Lieutenant. Okay, uh, one more resolution, community programs and parking services. Councilmember Hamlin. Uh, yes, this is ID, sorry, I'm not sure I'm on the right one, 10671, correct? Yep. As discussed in closed session, this is to declare a vacancy with community projects and parking services for an administrative assistant. I would like to make a motion to move this resolution. And I second. Uh, excellent. Um, any comments from members of council? Uh, congratulations to Susan Ring on her retirement. And thanks mm -hmm. for her service, uh, 16 years of service to the city of Summit. Um, agree. I agree with that. Yes. Absolutely. Comments from Thank you. Great. Comments from members of the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Consent agenda time. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Can we pull can we, oh, sure. We can pull it out after, right? Yeah, we can talk about it, yeah, okay. after. Uh, let's get a motion first, though. So moved. And a second? Second. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, all right, what do we want to talk about, consent agenda? I just wanted to pull out uh, a couple. One is uh, 10669. I meant to, the chief and I meant to huddle up on what this was last week, and I just forgot to call him. So I was just curious what the uh, fire shaft, right? That, am I saying it right? Yeah. Was uh, through, through your council president. I know there's an addition of 23,000 in that. <laughs> and I just was curious what it was. I, I read it and didn't understand it. Chief, you want to talk about the uh, change order for this one? Yeah, there's actually um, two change orders um, in resolution. One is for a plumbing relocation of a couple of, bath a couple of toilets in a bathroom. Uh, the big one is for 20,177. Um, Fire rated shaft. So part of our building is classified as living quarters, our dormitory area, um, due to some structural steel realignment and the fact that that wall back to the living quarters, we felt it was best to put in fire dampers. What fire dampers do is that, in case of the fire below us, it shuts off all the all the duct work and protects the living quarters. So we felt that was Got the safest it. option to include that now instead of waiting yeah. down the road. So. so the plumbing change was like a small piece, and the fire. Yeah, so the, yes, yeah, so the biggest piece was the uh, fire rate okay. shop assembly. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Th no, thanks I, for I, explaining I, it. I tried to understand <laughs> it, and I didn't understand it. And, and <laughs> Chief, Chief's going to be doing a presentation uh, on where we are with the firehouse uh, next council meeting, correct? That's correct. Um, yeah. And there's, gonna, there's likely to be other change orders in the opposite direction coming soon, right? Yeah, we do have, yeah, we do have a yeah. lot. We're working now, and get, we do have a lot of um, credits back. Even the change order is actually credits back, so. And we'll be going all of that at the next council meeting. Excellent. Great. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And then I yep. just wanted to pull out um, 10645, the West End paving. I was just trying to understand if this, for the West End Avenue, I know we did the paving already, and was it that we received the grant, now we're getting, is it an expenditure? I was just trying to understand exactly the process for the West End Avenue project. Tim? Yeah, through you, Council President. This is the, usually when we get DOT grants, we get 75% up front, and then when we finish the project, we submit the reimbursement and we get the other 25%. Okay. So this is the other 25% having completed the work. This is the end of the, the grant for us. And so the total project for this was 330? Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what the total of the entire project was. This is the grant amount, though. Okay. I don't have that on hand. I can get that for you, though. Okay, that, that's okay. I just trying to. I was running the numbers. It didn't make sense to me, but I think now it does. Yeah. So. So usually it's seventy-five percent in the beginning and twenty-five percent at the end when we close out. Well, when did, when we, we, show when did we finish the paving for that project? Is that long ago? Twenty twenty-one, I believe. Was I guess that's what I was yeah. just. I was just curious. I was looking at the timing of it. It didn't make any. It didn't make sense to me. No, I, I could just share that uh, the seventy-five percent comes very easy. You just said okay. the awarding resolution. The twenty-five percent, uh, there's so much paperwork and so much back and forth that with that one, especially that overlap with the engineer um, the, departing, that it, it just kind of took longer to get everything together. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying. Can I take a quick, just yep. that prompted a question for me. Is that normally, is that normal that it would take, that 25% um, would take a, two years? Two years. 
No, I, I can take it. Uh, no. Oh. Uh, it, it requires two parts. The project has to be fully closed out. So just because paving and striping might be done, there could be punch list items, certified payrolls that the contractor has okay. to provide for, for months after. And when you get to that part of the contract, he, he or she is in no hurry to get the paperwork in because they've basically been paid. Mm -hmm. So there's just a, a lot of back and forth. And at that point, we only have retainage, which is a small, which eventually they, they will come and get. So, But that one was more or less just a, there was a few there that we overlapped as, as the engineering division um, kind of changed. But I'm, I'm happy to report right now we're basically caught up on all of them, including the 75% uh, for um, Prospect Street, which was last year's and just awarded. And now with um, awarding division um, tonight, we'll submit that tomorrow and in a couple months we'll have that 75%. So. Thank you. Good. Any other comments on the consent agenda? Comments from members of the public? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Excellent. Thank you. We are on to public comments. At this point in the meeting, council welcomes comments from any member of the public about issues that are not topics on tonight's business agenda. If you have a prepared statement, please provide a copy to the clerk. And let's keep it to about three minutes. Yes. Good evening, Mayor Radis, uh, Council President Bartan, members of Common Council, Jim Bennett, B-E-N-N-E-T-T, -E -E 38 Fairview Avenue. I want to report on my July 20th, 2023 meeting with the then Acting City Administrator who, and uh, still the Treasurer, Tammy Baldwin, first about an idea that we explored but had to cross off. We explored investing in quality corporate bonds that pay higher rates presumably tax-free to Summit, although they would be taxable to a non-municipal bondholder. Only quality corporate bonds would be acceptable uh, because preservation of principle is the prime consideration for any public investment. However, New Jersey statutes proscribe any public investment outside eight authorized types. The eight consist of federal and New Jersey issued securities and the New Jersey Cash Management Fund. I've not heard from the New Jersey Division of Investment about the Cash Management Fund, but assume that high quality corporate bonds are not in it. The subject is hypothetical until Summit can migrate from the debt side of the debt equity curve to the investment side. When I last appeared, I proposed getting to the equity side by amortizing the city's $65 million debt through paying down $2.3 million annually. And this pay down was to be in addition to any amortization included in the budgeted debt service. But my meeting with Ms. Baldwin showed how we might be able to go smaller and still get to the same place. The increase in debt service will drop next year and become a decrease in the following years, particularly in 2027. Much of this development is due to the big items, the firehouse and the community center being finished with no significant capital projects on the horizon. So if the city of Summit can simply freeze its debt service payments at next year's level for the out years, we can start to see a rapid decline in debt principal without adding or increasing a budget item. But council must resolve to take two steps. First, keep debt service at next year's level of slightly over 6.6 .6 million through the out years. Debt service is not subject to the municipal budget cap. Second, keep capital projects at $2 million annually going higher only to avoid deferring needed items. Council must manage stressors on the budget to come primarily from state mandated pension and health care costs. If temporary reserves build up through these measures, future capital projects can receive funds through a combination of these reserves, current receipts, and bonding at a reduced level. Over time, the city can arrive at a place where it becomes a net investor, not a net debtor. 
Staying this course calls for resolve and discipline from this and future councils beginning now. But staying the course will sidestep a Fitch-style downgrade that we have seen of federal credit that I submit has been years in the making. I'll ask you to wrap up. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to come. I call on council to act now to keep Summit strong as interest rates rise. Thank you. Thank you. Greg, can I just make a quick comment? Sure. Um, I'd like to say thank you, Mr. Bennett. You always uh, keep us on our toes, and I know that I'll be pinging uh, uh, Mr. Rogers tomorrow and asking him specific questions, but I think um, really looking at our debt service, especially as the budget meetings come up, is, is uh, for my colleagues, I think it's a really important task for us to focus on and, and have conversations on debt service levels, uh, especially with rising interest rates. So I just thank you for your, your leadership and your interest on this topic, and I know you spent a lot of time on that, so thank you. Three Council President. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Michael uh, Rogers, how much do we spend annually on road repairs, roughly? It all depends on a given year, uh, Councilman. Um, I'm just trying to think of what we did this year, which was a low amount, an unusually low amount. Um, but I think it's just under a million dollars. I don't remember exactly, but that was low. That's a, this is a very low budget. And, and for some of the reasons that Mr. Bennett stated, uh, we've been in that sort of very difficult process of going through capital projects. There are a lot of needs every year, and we've had to defer and continue to defer. But through a thoughtful process that we go through of what is most emergent uh, and necessary to do in any given year. Um, but yes, debt has always been top of mind for me since I started here and will continue to be the case for, for all of us in the coming years. So um, yes, I applaud your uh, interest in it because <laughs> not many people like to talk about debt, um, but I do. And um, yeah, that's, that's it. But there's a continuing need and, 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 and we must always evaluate those needs on an annual basis, so. Thank you. Can I say that um Delia, you will find when you have your conversation with Michael about um, about debt that he has been beating the drum about debt for the eight years I have been on council. So and and you know, educating all of us and talking about it and being creative in ways to minimize the impact on the city. So thank you, Mr. Bennett, um, for your interest um, and you know. Not a lot of people are enthusiastic about talking about debt, so I appreciate that. But um, it's not something that we have just, you know, blithely, it's just suddenly we're thinking, oh, wait, is there debt? It's, we've been talking about this for a long time. I didn't think that, so. I no, just, I know you didn't. Yeah. I'm just explaining to everybody else who's, you know, out in the audience. Here and not here. All right. Thank you. Hi. Elizabeth Fagan, 27, author in place. Um, I, we heard last uh, council meeting about the upgrades to the AV um, uh, technology here in council quarters. And I just wanted to say thank you, Rosie, because it sounds like it was a big job for you. Yeah. Um, so well done. Congratulations. You. Um, but it, it, I've been knocking on doors and, and talking to a lot of people around town. And um, there are people that have asked, does this mean that maybe we'll get hybrid meetings? Um, there are people that are taking the train back from the city. There are people that are, you know, have little kids and can't get babysitters, but still want to participate. Um, so I just am curious if this is a po this opens the possibility. I know it's been discussed in the past, and I understand that there we've talked about the fact that there are some, um, you know, things that maybe would prevent it. But I just am curious if this might. Well, I, I would respectfully defer to the city solicitor on hybrid meetings, just because of the structure of them so yeah. if you have any other questions though let's do them up front no that's it okay thank, thank you. you okay push this right push it no don't push it oh don't, don't push it um <laughs> a little slow so hybrid meetings um there's a couple of issues i don't know anything about technology you're talking to the wrong person i could barely turn on my phone um but in terms of hybrid meetings, um, the, when you advertise for a hybrid meeting, the, the one thing that you have to do is if you have a technology failure, and I think there was a, an evening 
not too long ago we had a failure here. If you've advertised for that and that occurs, you have to cancel the meeting. Um, so that's a difficult um, thing to envision unless we've perfected the technology. I can tell you that most, um, I, I don't really know of, I can't really think of any that are, are doing uh, hybrids. There's a few that are doing hybrids, but most of them now are getting away from that. What they're doing is they're doing live streaming so people can watch the meeting, um, whether it's uh, Facebook Live, I think Zoom has a, a, a live thing, but they're not doing the participation remotely. That, that becomes difficult. Um, and it's, again, uh, just because of the technology. The one thing that we did do is we we've, we've did try to anticipate the uh, high definition televisions and that, so if Comcast gets approval for that, then maybe we can get that here. Um, but, you know, I think that, that your meetings are scheduled and it's, you know, it's better for folks to, to be here. It's very, very difficult if you've been in hybrid meetings um, and during the pandemic, it was very, very difficult. There was a lot of, of problems. The other problem, too, is, is that uh, if you don't have the proper technology, you can occasionally get, um, they call it Zoom bombing. And, and I was at a number of those meetings where, you know, you have people get on and um, some very inappropriate things are said, usually of a pornographic nature. Um, and you can't control that. So, um, so one thing you guys should all know is if, it's, if you're going to do it, do not put me in charge of any technology because <laughs> you will be Zoom bombed. <laughs> well, you, were, you were about to just be muting yourself for that whole answer. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, uh, <laughs> Council President, but, yes. also I think, um, Matt, if you could speak to the fact that the state has not provided any guidelines yeah, that, for that, the safe you know, conduct of meetings like that. Yeah, it's, so the, I mean, the, whole, the Open Public Meeting Act, there was guidance, emergency guidance that was uh, promulgated when the pandemic hit, and, and just so fo so boards of ed, uh, counties, municipalities could conduct business and get things done. When they did it, it was interesting. They actually said that you should only be doing uh, necessary business, so you know, paying bills, uh, approving road projects, etc. They didn't want people doing extraordinary uh, items uh, via Zoom. Um, they have not promulgated any type of guidance, so it's kind of, um, you know, there's different w things that are happening. I can tell you that, that uh, some boards of ed have passed uh, remote policies for members to appear remotely, but they limit it to like, you know, two or three times per year. It's usually due to a, a pressing business need or a, um, uh, a health reason. But again, it becomes very hard because it's difficult for people in the, in the general public if you're at home watching it and somebody's zooming in, it's hard to have that technology where it's broadcast properly. So, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of it. Having, I spent a lot of nights at different meetings and I can tell you that in my estimation, the best meeting you can have is a public meeting. I think there's a lot more clarity um, and, and the record's clear. But and we'll see what, you know. The, thank you. And I'll just add, we are live streaming on YouTube. Right, now, right through the city, yeah. through the yeah. city's uh, YouTube channel. So May that. I make a when you're done? Sorry. May I make a comment? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I would just like to say, is it possible we could put this in a uh, official discussion action referral? I could probably rattle off. I know Avalon, New Jersey is doing them. Uh, Fairhaven. I'm not sure if they're submitting, but if if you just go on right now, I could list probably eight that are doing them. Is it possible we could just look into it and do a DAR and maybe do some research? Yeah, I think we should have a committee discussion about it. But I think what's relatively clear is that we need better protection from the state legislature from the state legislature right that somebody else's failure of their wi-fi at their home is not going to cause our entire meeting to be invalidated but so I, that would be my position on it right now um but yeah we, let's, I mean, we, let's we, have can, a, we we'll, can yeah. I, I can just say that, that i've seen more and more um public meetings going back to having live comment here in the chambers but they're streaming the meetings live. So they're no longer, you, what it used to happen is they would tape them and then like the next day they would run them on, you know, channel 77 Comcast. What's happening right now is there's actually live streaming so people can get on and watch it. And I can tell you that I've been at a lot of meetings where somebody is watching it and an issue comes up and all of a sudden you see the person walk in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if they're home or they're coming back from, you know, the city or something like that, they do have access and they can participate. 
Um, the other thing too is you guys do have your comments now at the end so that people do have an opportunity to, to, to come and avail themselves of that. We can look at it. Yeah, I, I can tell you, you know, all I could do for you is tell you where they're doing it, where they're not doing it. The technology, I, I am not a, an expert in that whatsoever. Okay. Thank you. So we officially can put this as a DAR? We'll have this go through administrative Great. policies, but yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. I just wanted to add one thing about your, the, the, the DAR that I think would be we should probably at least uh, reach out to your legislatures because I think what if you're going to do it there should be something um, where the notice of the open public meeting that's occurring in public is sufficient and you're doing the remote uh, if you're going to do that as really a, a courtesy so that if it fails it doesn't cancel your meeting. Because you guys have bills to pay, you have, to, and there's a lot of laws. Like for example, there's a prompt payment act. So when you have bills, you have to pay them promptly. And if you have a failed meeting, you have to re-advertise it. You could actually put the city at jeopardy. So that's something that I think, if if the, if the administrative committee is going to do it, it's something that you should reach out to the state legislatures, representing Summit, to see if they could do that at least to give some coverage or a, an amendment to the Open Public Meeting Act to provide that. Mm -hmm. I will say, um, um, Mr. Giacobbe, that it, the ones that I've seen, at least, they actually have in their um, in their introduction that if it's stopped via live stream, the ultimate goal would be here to be in person. But if there is a malfunction, then the priority of, of order would be here at the meeting. Yeah, the only pro the only problem is that 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 those are basically towns just making up the rule. The, I mean, the Open Public Meeting Act is a statutory. Um, Late, it's laid out statutorily what's permitted and what's not and what's required in terms of notice, et cetera. And so I think to really protect everybody, if there was amendment to it, and, and the laws get amended all the time, um, and that's something that really should be brought to our legislatures, your legislature's attention because that's something that they could put that right in the law. And so then if you're live streaming it with public comment and there's a failure, it doesn't cancel your meeting. And that would just be something that, you, that would be incorporated in the notice. Jamel Boyer, 204 Morris Avenue, Council President, Council Persons, Mayor. Uh, I've, I've been approached by uh, several residents about the noise from the Union County rifle and pistol range. Uh, if anyone doesn't know where that's at, that's in Springfield. Uh, I used to live on like, Orchard and Yale. Uh, and I just wanted to know, well, when I was living there, that was several years ago, so normally I would hear uh, the firing pretty much like Sundays, uh, Saturday, um, but it wasn't so frequent. So I'm hearing that it's a, it's a constant, um, it's, a, it's a constant firing. So I wanted to know uh, if there is anything that we can do about that to reduce the noise in those areas. It seems like a quality of life issue. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, you and the other candidates were all copied in a response from me about that um, because I've recently been in touch with the Union County Sheriff who is responsible for overseeing the operation of the range. Um, and there is, uh, they've, they've gone in the last uh, year or so back from one qualification per year during the pandemic to now two qualifications per year. So we're hearing more uh, than we would normally hear. Um, and the other, the, there's a few things going on, um, which is that it's any of, the, any of the obvious solutions, like moving it indoors someplace, or putting up sound barriers, or having it not be during uh, business hours, are all things that are, that are not possible for a number of reasons that the sheriff described and that I put into that email that was communicated to people. Um, but what I think is a small piece of progress uh, that we had from a meeting with Jefferson School parents and the sheriff was that w that the desire of those Jefferson School parents was to not have kids be hearing the sound of gunfire when they are outside during an active shooter drill, right? So what the sheriff agreed to was to have the, the principal of Jefferson or the superintendent or both reach out to him 
when they're going to have um, active shooter drills, and they will not have any firing at least that whole morning or at least that whole afternoon that they're going to be do it might even be the whole day i have to check my notes on that um that they're going to be doing that so that's it I, I think a small piece of progress um and the uh union county sheriff is very amenable to uh meeting and speaking with residents of summit about this um and he's willing to go into the schools and have an assembly and talk about what the noise is that they're hearing and he's willing to do uh, really anything that we're that we're uh, that we ask him to do that's that's reasonable um, so uh, that's a, a brief update on that um, but there's more in that email that I sent right I got a copy yeah. you copied me on that email yeah and I my recollection is that pre-COVID um, these these uh, the shooting range was used not just on weekends but during the week and there oh, yeah. were several several municipalities and organizations that are required to have this yeah. training. Oh yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, lots of lots of Union County agencies, federal agencies. Um, yeah. Council President, yeah. Um, thank you. I'm I'm glad to hear that the sheriff has been engaged in working on this. Um, I, I feel like I was actually going to send you an email tomorrow because a resident sent a video with the sound um, on the. Sorry, my back is turned. Yeah, yeah. Um, with the sound on the video, and I, I have to be honest, it feels a bit traumatizing. And to live and back up into that area, and there is an enormous amount of shooting and gun noise um, as a quality of life issue, if you're sitting in your backyard and you're listening to it for hours, um, I think that not doing more is, we should not accept that. And I understand that this has been in place for a long time. They absolutely need to do the training. We support that. Um, but there's a lot of acreage there, and um, I would say that we absolutely should potentially look at sound barriers of some sort and how that would work. Because when you hear the video, I, I can't yeah, imagine I, any I of live, us would want to. I live and, there. I hear it every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and I, so, yeah, I, I get that. Um, the, the and I just want to finish. I'm sorry. Yeah. And um, having children go in and learn about the noise of gun. Um, being fired. I think that's really antithetical to what we discuss as a community. Um, I think it's great that they are taking, the, they're going into the schools and they're having the children understand what's happening, but I think that is completely against what we've um, supported, which is the anti gun um, discussion at this council. So I just want to say that. Yeah, that I, was an uh, offer that the sheriff had made. I appreciate not something it. Something that's happening yet. Um, I just wanted to be clear about that okay. but also yeah absolutely i hear it all the time and i think um you know the the main challenge of the sound barriers is that they've been proven not really to work at all um so there's i think there's a lot of options that continue to need to be explored but this was just a very good first step that takes, takes and is the, there a yeah. time frame i'm sorry i just really want to push it this because it, it seems pretty significant is there a time frame that they can't shoot i during the day like is there an ordinance that we can put in place um i just i feel like not doing anything is not going to be an option but it's not the yeah. city of summit's property right oh. so this is in an this ordinance. is but it's a noise it's in it's in springfield it's, and it's operated by the union county sheriff so we're gonna we should you've got the email from me also right so we should engage in a longer conversation about okay. that and we can bring the sheriff in and we can have a longer conversation okay. about it yes and just so you're clear, noi noise is governed by the DEP, and um, uh, noise ordinances are um, specific to the municipality. So if this is in Springfield, it would be, be Springfield, but there are exceptions for um, law enforcement and things like that. But I think you got... In other places I've been, you work with the sheriff cooperatively, and they, sometimes they can regulate the time of day it is and, and so there's less disruption you're not going to eliminate it but less disruption and um you know just so folks know the double qualification not only applies to uh police officers and sheriff's officers it also applies to retired police officers and all the sros that are in schools now which are all retired police officers they all have to qualify twice a year so in the, in the qualification i forget how i think it's like you have to shoot like 40 or 80 rounds um, 
of bullets twice a year just to qualify to carry a gun. It's so more, I think it's more than that. It might be, but yeah. you but you but you can work with the sheriff and see if there's a way yeah. of, of. And that's what we're that's what we're yeah. doing. I don't think anybody's here saying problem solved. Where we have there's more work to do. Yeah. Okay. Other comments. All right. I'm going to close the comment period, and we're going to move on to council member comments and new business. Council President, I have new business. Yep. <laughs> Give me one second. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I have two things to bring up. Sorry. Um, first, one of my priorities, and I think um, many of my colleagues on this dais also equally share, is to keep our residents informed and engaged. So at my request, as the chair of the Administrative Policies and Community Relations Committee, our communication office is further developing an existing community engagement plan. It will be expanded to involve more staff from all the departments and divisions across the city, and it's gonna seek ways to identify on how we can receive and share information with our public. Um, I've heard, we've all heard that the community desires more engagement, and so this initiative is in line with the council's goal to promote effective and transparent governance. I look forward to sharing more details with you as soon as we have um, more of the plan is complete. And then the second is we're excited to announce that over the next six months, the city will be updating its website. This refresh is done every four years in partnership with Civic Plus and will make the website much more user friendly and responsive to your needs. Um, I really just want to give kudos that this is an enormous undertaking that will be led by the communication office as well as a team of city staff. Excellent. That's it. Thank you. Let's make sure we tag in the uh, Technology Advisory Committee to help on that one as well. Already recommended. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Other council member comments? New business? Yes. A couple of, um, I guess, one request and a couple of comments. Uh, this morning and the last couple of days, I've been. I, as of the last couple of days, I've been hearing some concerns from residents on Canoebrook Parkway, so I just wanted to put an official request in uh, for a, a DAR. I think, Rosie, we may have already have it in there officially, but, but I can't remember. Um, a lot of residents have been complaining about the speeding on Canoebrook Parkway cutting from River Road. Uh, I have spoken um, as well with the Chief of Police uh, regarding this, and also the paving on the area around the 90-ish uh, part of Canoebrook Parkway. I walked with a little, um, lot of the little kids from school today, and there's a lot of huge gaping holes in Canoebrook Parkway, so I know Director Schrager has left, but I think it's going to be really important to try to get that piece of road paved. I think the concerns are that we're not going to pave that road until we get the grant or figure out what we're going to do with the grant, so I was hoping to officially come up with some sort of plan. Um, it was very, I know we, we did fix some of the holes today, PSE&G. Uh, fix a lot of the the patchwork, but I think it's still not going to be satisfactory. So, just wanted to put a plug in for the residents there, and um, actually walked with a child who actually has difficulty walking today, and it was um, it was not an easy morning. So, I, I think we should really focus on paving that part of the road if we can. Yeah, agreed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, other than that, I just had a couple of updates for community services. We'll be having a public meeting in October to obtain uh, community feedback for maybe playgrounds. That's very exciting. Our fall sessions of both enrichment programs and TRICAN programs begin in the next two weeks. Registration is open for both. Registration for winter basketball open today, and the registration deadline is November 14th. Uh, Friday, September 29th, is the uh, Fiesta Latina on the Village Green starting at 6 p.m. That was changed in our uh, consent agenda tonight. And well done this weekend with uh, Summit Downtown and, and Summit Public Art. Uh, it was a really exciting weekend, and uh, thanks for, for all, everybody's hard work and, and the staff. So thank you very much. Thank you. I, I just wanted to add to the about Summit Downtown Inc. and, and Summit Public Art. They worked really hard. Um, it was a great event. The weather was great. I wasn't there. We were coming home from Rhode Island from a wedding, but um, my husband and I were helping in the cleanup crew at 4 o'clock, <laughs> and uh, there were still a lot of people roaming around. And uh, But the... The DPW guys and the Summit Public Art staff and volunteers and SDI worked really hard. So I just want to make sure we give them a, a good uh, thank you and shout out. One other thing I forgot, the uh, Chinese American uh, Parade Chinese Association was this weekend and that was fabulous as well. Uh, wonderful food and, and fun, so I forgot to mention that, but thank you. Picnic. picnic. The picnic, yes. What did I say? 
grade, grade picnic. I was there. It was a picnic. Okay. I do want to say the um, the cars and arts and cars was great mm -hmm. this weekend. Excellent job, and the police did a great job too. Yes. Okay. Is that it? Everybody good? Motion to adjourn. So Can I have one? Thank so you. Moved. And a second? So We're so bad at this. Can I get a second? A second. You can't second yourself. Oh. Who's the oh, second? The, no, James said Oh, okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We're adjourned. Thank We're you. <laughs>